is up everybody welcome back to the bass whooping channel um it feels super weird filming this video because i just told you guys in my previous video that i didn't know how long it would be before i could film and upload another video and i'm so busy that i never get time to go and then here we are the next day filming and fishing but it's because unfortunately my stepmother and my dad are both sick and my stepmom tested positive and I was around them the day before she tested positive so because of exposure I'm not allowed to return to work for 10 days at least and then obviously if I end up testing positive then it's gonna be a lot longer than that but as of right now it's 10 days I feel fine I don't feel any symptoms but it's only been three days since I was there so you never know because I'm not allowed to go back to work and I don't want to be around people because I don't want to risk exposing them to it if I do have it I'm gonna go fishing because I can't think of a better way to quarantine than be by yourself at the lake so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna go back to Car Fork Lake because I did well there in the winter time last year I think um, the water should be really low and muddy and I can walk around that little culvert right where the juice is and hopefully be able to catch some bass so you guys stay tuned enjoy the video once again thank you all for sticking around this whole time that I've been gone. I truly appreciate it. Um, I will be popping up the verse of the day somewhere here in a second. I don't know where it's gonna be. It's gonna be probably over here or over here. And depending on where this is in the video, I'm sorry about that big, I think it's up here, that big um, watermark that says made with Kind Master. I just, I no longer pay for Kind Master, so there's gonna be a watermark there until, if I start making a lot of videos, I'll remove that. But as of right now, it's there, so just kind of look past it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go. So uh, I'll see you guys when we get to the water. Cheers. As you guys can probably see I'm not sure if you can see or not but the water is not muddy it's low so we can walk over there but it's not muddy so uh, I'm not sure how well this is gonna go but we're gonna try it I waited until noon to come out and I was planning on being here at noon like at 12 o'clock but unfortunately some things happened and it took me a little bit longer to get here and it's uh, about two o'clock right now so we got maybe three hours to fish we're gonna try our best to catch some but I mean we're here so I'm going to tie up some jerk baits because that's what worked last time I was here and we're going to give it a full send so you guys stay tuned enjoy the video let's get cranking looking from here there's still a ton of grass down there so I won't be able to fish the spot that I was hoping to fish but this little area right here right where it opens up like the mouth of this on the other side is where we were catching them with the jerk bait so I'm going to go over there and try that but first I gotta pee being here three minutes and I already had to put my my little face mask thing on because it is freaking cold this is kind of upsetting I expected it to be really muddy and I don't know why all this grass is still here I thought it would be already killed off and clearly I was wrong here we go this jerk bait is an Ozark trail to Walmart brand so I really wanted to give it a try and it's in shad pattern and there is shad in this lake so hoping hoping it'll work this is my first cast since the beginning of November oh it feels good Okay, so unfortunately, that was a bust. I didn't see anything, didn't get a bite, nothing happened. So, boo. Anyway, next time I see you, we'll either be at Fish Pond or on a different lake, a different day. Either way, regardless, you guys stay tuned. Enjoy the video if there is one. And, uh, 
yeah, see you when we get somewhere. Okay, so we are back. It is a new day, a new body of water, and a new plan. So I decided that I would go through my favorite mid to late winter baits and show you guys what I like to use to try to catch some big bass, no matter what kind of body of water you're on, whether it be pond, lake, stream, whatever, these tactics work. The only issue is there's ice on this pond everywhere, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to throw anything, let alone catch a fish, but the sun is coming up. We got about two and a half hours. Some of this ice seems like it's melting. It's so thin that I could probably just bust right through it with any kind of lure, and I'm seeing movement over here really close to the bank. And uh, I think I know why that is, and I'll explain that when I get some of these lures tied on and we start fishing. So that's our that's our goal. We're still going to try to catch some fish. You guys stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Let's get to cranking. Okay, so we're down on the other side because I tried filming this up there, and there's just too much ice on the water. And this side down here is actually not frozen over at all, even though most people don't think you can. You can still catch shallow bass in the winter. Because all of this grass, these laydowns, rocks, anything like that, they hold in heat. So when the sun comes out, they warm up, they melt the ice all around the shallow ends, and that's what creates this perimeter of water around all of the ice that's out in the middle. If that made any sense, I'm sorry, I'm trying to explain it. But that's your best days to go out and try to catch shallow winter bass, those big girls that are in a foot of water and it's 40 degrees outside that's the reason because this water right here on around the the ponds and lakes it heats up it gets really warm all these rocks and grass and laydowns they hold in that heat and the bass follow the bait fish i mean they all come up to to get warm and that's where the bass can eat they'll stay here until when the sun goes down and it starts to get cooler again and then they'll go back out into the deep back to the warmer water that's at the bottom of the lake but anyway, I tried filming this over there, and it was just, I couldn't cast. I mean, I, I had maybe four foot of water that was open. The rest of it is ice. I don't know if you guys can still see that out there, but all of that out in the middle is ice. And right here, I have all of this space to fish, and there's no ice. So we're going to stay over here. Plus, with this being like this, it shows me that this is the warmer part of the pond, so there should be fish here. Anyway... I decided what I'm gonna do is instead of boring you guys to death and sitting in the vehicle and going through each of my winter baits that I like to use, I would just talk about each of them as I'm using them. So I'll use all of them today and I'll explain a little bit about them while I'm fishing with them. And you won't be bored to death just watching me sit there. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, to kick it off, I think we're gonna use and talk about one of my all time favorite early, mid, and late winter baits, and that would be the jerk bait. The reason I love the jerk bait so much is because during the winter, you have to slow down your presentation and it gets super boring. You're sitting there slowly dragging something across the bottom or slowly cranking something in. And I'm the type of fisherman that I like to, I like to keep moving. And with a jerk bait, even though, as you see how I'm using it, it feels like I'm still fishing fast, it's that pause that makes all the difference. So there'll be a big lethargic bass sitting there, and you know sometimes you can catch them and they'll still have mud on their stomachs because they're just laying on the bottom. So when you twitch this a couple times, even though it has that fast, like sporadic movement, when you pause it, the bass sees that as a chance to eat it without having to chase it down. So that's why it excels in the winter time and it gives us fishermen a break from having to move so slow and feel like we're just going to lose our mind of boredom. The reason that it works so well and the fish actually want it is because during the winter and I mean mid to late winter when the waters start reaching those freezing temperatures a lot of the bait fish whether it be shad, small bluegill, other type of minnows, whatever it may be a lot of them start to die off because they can't live in such cold water. So the jerk bait does an excellent job of imitating a dying bait fish. Because I don't know if you've ever seen one, but I've seen them when they're when they're dying. And what they do 
is they'll flutter like they're trying to get away from death and then they'll stop and then they'll kind of float or they'll kind of just suspend there. So a suspending or slow floating jerk bait just imitates it perfectly. So the bass actually, you know, they're hungry. They're going to sit there. They don't want to chase anything. But when they see this thing dying and kind of suspending or floating up, they see that as a perfect opportunity for an easy meal. And they just crush it. I don't know what it is about the jerk bait, but I mean, it just works. And honestly, it works year round for me. I've caught, I've caught bass on this thing in the dog days of summer and I've caught them in the coldest days of the winter. So you really can't go wrong. I just think it excels in the winter. I think you do better with this in the winter and early spring than you would in the summer. Okay, so the next bait that can be absolutely deadly in the winter is a jig. Now, there's a huge debate that goes around whether you should use a big jig or just get a smaller presentation and go with something like this. Um, in my experience, it really doesn't matter. They will eat both of them, but it's really, you know, just your body of water. You just... You just play around with it and see. Now, with a jig, the reason that I don't use a jig much in the winter is because it is super slow and, you know, I kind of get tired of sitting there. But if you want to catch those lethargic bass, those big bass that are sitting on the bottom, this is a good way to do it. Um, sometimes, even though it is boring, the reward is worth all of that time you spent sitting there. The way I fish it is I just throw it out and I drag it as slow as I possibly can back to me. And I only threw it right here just to show you. Normally, what you would want to do is, like I said earlier, this surrounding area of the pond and lake that is thawed out, it's thawed out because it holds grass, rocks, wood, or anything else that's going to hold heat. So those are the things you want to flip this thing by. Flip it by a lay down and let it sit there for a minute. Kind of barely move it, flip it back in there. Just keep doing that over and over. And if there is a bass there and it's sitting there, if you drag this right in front of its face and stop, chances are it's going to eat it. No matter what size it is, because whether it's a big jig or a small jig, it's a free meal. So they're, they're going to eat it. So there's really not much I can say about a jig. You, you all know how a jig works. You know how to fish a jig. Um, there's a certain time in the winter when the bass stop chasing shad and small bait fish and they switch over and transition to crawls. And that's the perfect time to start throwing a jig. The only issue is, as you all know, if you're a fisherman, you know this, bass don't read the rule book. So there's not a definite time to start throwing a jig. And I've seen people catch giant bass on a jig in the middle of the winter. And when I say the middle of the winter, I mean when there's a foot of snow on the ground and ice on the water. It's because... It's really slow. They don't have to chase it. So they're definitely gonna they're definitely gonna take a free meal. So if you pull this in front of a bass's face, chances are you're gonna get bit. That's another thing that you need to uh, think about when you're fishing in the winter when it's super cold like this. Your bites are gonna feel different. I mean I've caught some I've caught some fish when it's really cold like this and didn't even know I had them. So you gotta pay really close attention because they're not gonna slam it. I mean they will sometimes but for the most part your bites are going to be these tiny little ticks that you won't even know happened if you're not paying attention so that's another thing sometimes i'll be i miss a lot of fish in the winter when i'm fishing with a jig because i'll pull it over a lay down and well i'll think i'm pulling it over a lay down and instead of actually hitting like a log or a rock or anything like that it was actually a bite and i won't know until i see my line kind of moving super slow and then I'll pull up and feel it. By the time I set the hook, he's already let go of it. So it's a 
something you got to get used to for sure okay so bait number three is a bait that I really have no experience with I don't have much experience with it at all but it can be one of the most rewarding baits on this list and that is a swim bait now whether it's a big swim bait or a small swim bait they can all work really well in the winter and like I said I don't have much experience with it but the way I know to catch fish with this in the winter is throw it out let it hit the bottom and just creep it and when I say creep it I mean painfully slow go as slow as you possibly can and then slow down and that's why I don't have much experience with it I don't really care for super slow fishing but like I said with the jig I know sometimes that's what it takes so it can never hurt to uh, make a few casts with it and just see you you might get lucky and like I said those bigger bass they'll be sitting on the bottom waiting for a big meal to come by one that they don't have to chase so if you creep this in front of a six seven pound bass they're gonna eat it I mean a one and a half two pound bass will probably eat it but those big bass that don't really want to move this is this is how you get them but like I said, cast it out there, and I mean creep it. Creep, creep. Go as slow as you possibly can, and then slow down. See, when I first heard this and seen people doing it, it didn't make much sense to me. And then I seen the bass that they were catching, and it completely changed my thought process on it. I was like, all right, let's try that. I have still yet to catch a fish on a swim bait so I am by no means an expert but I can tell you that you have a chance of catching the biggest fish of your life on a swim bait so a bait that falls under the same category as the swim bait is an underspin um, I would much rather use a smaller underspin but this is all I got so we're gonna have to make do so I watched a video from Tactical Bass and Matt Allen was explaining how they use underspins and I pretty much like to use them the same way and that's pretty much throw them out there just like the swim bait and just creep them along the bottom and sometimes this won't even be spinning most of the time this won't even be spinning but dragging it across the bottom if it hits something and this gives some kind of little shine especially like today on a sunny day that little flash could be enough to entice a big bass to come and eat it unfortunately this um, underspin is a lot heavier than I'd like to use here so it's probably gonna pull in a ton of grass just like the just like the big swim bait did so I'm not sure if it's gonna do us any good I can already feel it pulling up grass so I mean I don't I don't think this is gonna work for us here but but I know an underspin is also a really, really good technique to use during the winter time. Let's see how much grass we got on this bad boy. And that was just from cast. Look at that. I didn't even bring it in, but two or three. Wow. There's just so much grass in this pond that it's really hard to fish anything on the bottom. Okay, now we're getting into the more common every angler kind of bait, and that is the drop shot. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it may come as a surprise, I've never caught a fish on a drop shot, ever, in my entire life. But essentially, you got your drop shot weight, and a little bit higher up off the bottom, you have your, your bait. I'm using one of these Guggen baits, uh, I forget what it's called, drag and drop or something like that. And I mean, it looks, it looks perfect, but as I said, I've never caught a fish on a drop shot. Not because it doesn't work, just because I've only threw it a few times and I've just, I've just never had luck with it. But I know essentially it's just like you would fish a jig or something, just throw it and drag the weight 
across the bottom really, really slow. Or you can even leave it sitting in one spot and kind of dance the worm around or just whatever. The little small presentation is usually what, what draws the fish in. I've just, I know it's a, uh, I know it's a, um, a confidence bait for a lot of people. If they can't catch anything on a certain bait, they'll always switch over to a drop shot. For example, Greg Blanchard, I watch his videos all the time, and he just, he slays them on a drop shot, and I've just never caught a fish on a drop shot. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work. I know this is one of the preferred methods and one of the best methods that you can use when the water temperature's low and the fish aren't biting. Same for dog days of summer, when it's super hot and the fish just don't want to commit to anything. Drop shots, what get it? What gets it done? Just, it's never been for me. Just like with any other bait, you want to throw it up towards anything that's holding heat, any kind of grass, any kind of lay down around some rocks, anywhere where there's going to be bass setting. You throw this thing up there, let it dance in front of their face, and nine times out of ten, they're going to eat. I've just never been so lucky. <laughs> So another bait that would be a really good bait to throw in the winter, especially early winter and then late winter into early spring, would be a red lipless crankbait. This cotton cordell, it's like in a, a red crawl pattern. This would work fantastic. The only reason I'm not going to tie this on is because there's just so much grass that I really, I can't fish it. Ideally, you want some grass, that way you can rip it out, but this grass is dying and it's all clumped up together and each pop, it still won't come out of the grass without bringing half of the grass with it. So I'm not gonna be tying this on. I may tie it on a little bit later and try it, but as of right now, we're not going to. But as for an honorable mention, something that most of you probably wouldn't expect to be on this list, we have a spinnerbait. Now, spinnerbait really works well early early winter late fall early winter and then early spring throughout spring and into summer but I've caught some of my biggest fish on a spinnerbait when the water's like 35 36 degrees and it's kind of the same as the underspin or the swim bait you want to just throw it out there and just creep it just creep it along the bottom those little blades kind of flashing around, especially when it's sunny and especially like today when we have a little bit of wind. I mean, you can actually catch some giant fish on a spinnerbait in the winter. So that's something you can try if nothing else is working. But now that I've told you pretty much all of my favorite go-to winter baits, I'm gonna go ahead and just fish around with each of them and see if I can't try to catch some fish and uh, make this video a little bit more interesting. The reason I decided to do this is because there's a good chance that I'm gonna get skunked and not catch a fish. At least this way, the video has some kind of entertainment to it. Maybe you'll learn something, maybe not. Maybe you already knew all this. Maybe you know better options, I don't know. But I just figured I would share with you what helps me catch fish when the water is like really cold or the middle of the winter going into early early spring and all of that because in reality fish don't read the rule books and really it all comes down to go out and just throw some baits go out and fish try everything that you have i've seen people catch fish on the weirdest things in the middle of the winter so if someone tells you you're doing it wrong, don't listen because you're not. Nobody is doing it wrong. You're just doing what works for you. And these lures that I've showed you today are just what works for me here in my location. So go out, throw some baits, try to catch some fish. 